Hi, I'm Jill Hatcher and I'm the Communications and Engagement Officer for Save in Scotland Red Squirrels. And today I'm going to talk about the communication side of the Developing Community Action Story and the impact that's had on the project with a view to how that may continue in the future. So I'll start at the very beginning by going through some of the key objectives in the DCA Communications Plan. So first of all, we wanted to provide support and materials to help staff engage with local communities. We wanted to recruit volunteers to support the project, engage with stakeholders across Scotland and raise awareness amongst Scotland's general population of the need for urgent conservation action. And that last one is really important because although the DCA phase was very much about local engagement and recruiting local volunteers, without that widespread support for red squirrel conservation, including grey control, the rest is much more difficult to sustain long term. So first of all, a very quick squirrel comms SWOT analysis. So one of the big strengths of this project is that we are working with such an iconic Scottish species and one which is particularly photogenic. People just love red squirrels. They're also a really charismatic animal and lots of people have quite a personal relationship with their garden red squirrels, which means that we get loads of user generated content. Basically, people love sending us their red squirrel photos and it makes my job so much easier. Also, in terms of the actual project, there's lots of positives to talk about. We've got a steady stream of good news stories coming out that we can talk about and share with the public. Of course, on the other side, just as much as people love red squirrels, a lot of people love grey squirrels too, particularly in those areas where people have grown up only seeing grey squirrels and they might be one of the closest interactions they've ever had with nature. So gaining that widespread support for action is always going to be a challenge and with that comes the risk of negative press. Unfortunately, for this presentation, I couldn't actually find any good examples of negative press from Scotland, but it is something that we need to be aware of and it's something that we always need to be prepared for too. So the first thing on the comms agenda at the very beginning of the project was a project rebrand, which saw the logo change in November 2017. But it wasn't just about a logo change. The rebrand reshaped our whole visual identity. And by standardising our visual impact and the messaging that we had across the board, we could hopefully boost recognition for the project. And also just by increasing the professional appearance of the project, we could enhance trust and also reflect the level of investment that's been put into the project. And I think having this suite of branded materials that were consistent and looked professional really helped the staff on the ground when they were trying to engage with local communities. And while developing community action, that phrase was a key message through all our branded materials, we did decide that when it comes to strap lines and so on, we would focus on the key message, which is saving Scotland's red squirrels, so that this brand identity could be something that could continue to benefit SSRS in the future in whatever form that it might take. And the next big project was the development of the community hub, which my colleague Nicole is going to talk about in a lot more detail in the next presentation. But to put it simply, it's an online portal for both staff and volunteers to manage their project data with different levels of entry, um, depending on what your role is in the project, from expert squirrel spotters to people who are involved with our red squirrel networks in the south of Scotland and everything in between. Lots of different ways for people to engage with it. And Nicole's going to talk in more detail about the actual volunteer and staff portal, but with this also came a rebrand of the front face of the website with some added functionality. So it was an opportunity for us to engage more with both the public and our volunteers with extra things like the local network and volunteer group directory, which was a list of all the active volunteer groups that we were supporting in the south of Scotland, where people could go on, find out who they are, what they're up to and get in touch with them. And then things like um, additional pages for resources for volunteers, so things like training videos and health and safety documentation a kind of one stop shop for everything that they might need to help them to help us. And so the hub was launched in September 2018. And one of the targets in the initial communications plan was over the course of the project to increase traffic to the website from about 37,000 users a year to 70,000. And in the past year, we've got 75,000 users. So we've definitely met that target. 
And I thought it was also quite interesting to look at Google Analytics and see the jump in page view. So you can see quite a distinct jump at that point when the hub was launched in terms of how much time people are spending on the website and how many pages they're visiting. Um, and that's obvious because now there's so much more people can do on the site, but it just shows you that people are spending longer on it. It's become a much richer engagement tool for our volunteers in particular, but also for the public. And of all the pages on the website, including those behind the hub login, 18% of all our page views across the duration of the project come from sightings, which is a huge amount, but it's really not that surprising. And obviously, the data is essential for conservation work, but also sightings is probably the most powerful communications tool that we have. And a phrase that I like to use a lot is that reporting a squirrel sighting is a simple thing that anyone in Scotland can do to help. It's a really simple and clear call to action that just about anyone can do. It makes people feel engaged, feel like they're doing something to help. It also brings traffic to the website where people might then go on to look at other things that we're doing as a project. And actually for a lot of people, reporting a squirrel sighting has been their first step towards becoming a more active volunteer. And it's not just website traffic, the sightings also feeds into a lot of our wider communications. So a red squirrel sighting appearing in a new and exciting place makes a great success story that can act as a case study for telling about the impact that the project is having overall. Um, and it's especially a good story when there's a personal element to it. So a red squirrel appearing in a popular park or somebody seeing a red squirrel in their garden for the first time in 30 years. And then on the flip side of that, an unwanted or undesirable grey squirrel sighting can also make a good press story. It's a prompt to action and um, by getting that story out there to the wider public, it's not just getting more people to report grey sightings where we really need them. It's also an opportunity to educate people about grey squirrel control. Um, and it's also a potential for people in the local area to stand up and offer to get more involved. And well, I've talked about red sightings and I've talked about grey sightings, so I feel now I have to give a mention to white sightings. So white squirrel sightings can drive staff a bit mad because people get really excited by them and think they're rarer than they actually are. But at the end of the day, the media love a story about a white red squirrel and it's just another opportunity to get the project name out there. So these kind of stories, they just they keep red squirrel conservation in the public consciousness. So I think it's something which is important to try and keep up the momentum with going forward. And that leads on quite nicely to the other major communications project in this phrase, which was the Great Scottish Squirrel Survey, which is basically the idea was to have a mass public engagement event which centred around sightings. And obviously we collect sightings all year round and the actual data we're collecting for this is no different, but it's just a big push to get as many sightings as we possibly can within the one week, with the idea being that you could make a comparison year on year. And the first one was in 2019, so there's been three so far and the most obvious time to hold a campaign like this was Red Squirrel Week, which happens every year in the last full week of September. It's also just a really good time of year for squirrel spotting. And so the budget for this campaign has always been quite limited. So a lot of the promotion has been fairly organic. It's just been social media, press releases, and then in our project areas, we've also put out posters and leaflets. And in the first year, we got a fairly modest turnout, but it was still significantly higher than the number of sightings that we would typically receive in one week. And those 631 people that did take part created a fairly good representation of what we'd expect a sightings map of Scotland to look like. So the plan, of course, for 2020 was to go bigger and better, but then 2020 came along and suddenly we were faced with a dilemma. People were being told not to travel, they were being told to spend limited time outdoors, and all the events that we would have organised during that week were not going to be an option. But looking at the sightings chart on the website, people clearly were still reporting squirrel sightings in greater numbers than they ever had before. So it was decided that the campaign could still go ahead just with some careful messaging around telling people to look for squirrels close to home. And all the events got moved online, which actually ended up being of great benefit because it meant that people all over the country could take part. And it paid off because um, like the overall sightings chart, the participation just shot up with over 2000 people taking part in 2020. So this year, things were beginning to open up again, just as we were starting to plan this year's Great Scottish Squirrel Survey. But obviously there was still a lot of uncertainty and hesitancy around traveling and gathering in big groups and so on. So although we dropped 
the stay at home messaging, we still kept most of our events online because that had been so successful the year before. And then the other message that we tried to get across this year was about the impact that COVID has had on the project. So by this stage, it was clear that during the spring survey that it wasn't going to come back for the remainder of the developing community action phase. So while the Great Scottish Squirrel Survey might have started out primarily as an engagement campaign, suddenly having a big chunk of sightings from the same week to compare year on year was more valuable than ever before, even if it's not quite as scientifically robust. So the results for 2021 are going to be published um, hopefully at the end of this conference in the next week or two, but it looks like the participation was around 1,500 people, so not quite the big boost that we had during lockdown in 2020, but still a really decent turnout. So as well as engaging with the public, I think the other big success story of the Great Scottish Squirrel Survey is stakeholder engagement. So each year we've created an information pack to send out to partners and like-minded organisations and this year the support was fantastic with so many organisations sharing the stories on social media and some even organising their own events in the local area. And I think there's still huge potential for growth in this campaign so I was pleased to hear that the plan is to continue with the Great Scottish Squirrel Survey beyond this project phase and it would be great to see other organisations get more actively involved in the future. But communications doesn't just play a role in sharing positive news stories, it's also played a part in managing squirrel pox outbreaks in the south of Scotland. So when there's a suspected outbreak of pox, how we communicate that and the channels we use needs a lot of careful consideration and there's a balancing act between not causing unnecessary alarm and not drawing attention to areas where trapping might be happening but also letting the public know how they can take action if that's appropriate. So we use a decision flowchart which factors in things like how likely it is there's an outbreak, um, the level of public footfall in the area and whether the news has already started to spread throughout the local community. And in some cases we decide to keep it super local and just stick to posters in the immediate area and then sometimes such as the outbreak that happened along the Solway coast in 2019 we need to get that message out wider to make sure that people are doing things like taking in their feeders and reporting any sightings of sick looking red squirrels. So quite often squirrel pox communications is reactive to a current situation but we have also tried to proactively spread awareness particularly around the potential for squirrel pox to reach the central lowlands at some point in the near future. And actually on Thursday evening there, we held an information event online for landowners in that part of the country, which has been recorded. And if anyone's interested in watching the recording of that, it's been uploaded to the Crowdcoms platform. So you should be able to see it if you look at the left hand menu bar after this. And so just wrapping up now, um, at the beginning of this presentation, I said that widespread public support was really important for the long term sustainability of red squirrel conservation in Scotland. And actually, my own experience of doing this job for four and a half years has certainly suggested that the majority of Scots want to know that their red squirrels are being protected and they're willing to accept that grey control is a part of that. But I don't think it's something that we can take for granted. In July 2016, so before this project phase started, a Scott Pulse survey was conducted with over a thousand Scottish adults and it found that actually just over half understood that grey squirrels were the greatest threat to red squirrels in Scotland today and about 70% agreed, at least to some extent, that grey squirrel control was important. So the plan is um, at the end of this project phase to repeat that survey again and it'll be really interesting to see if those figures have changed in any way, hopefully um, in the right direction. So that's all for me, but I just wanted to end by thanking a few people. So first of all, thanks to Alan Tate, our graphic designer, who's produced most of the design work throughout the project and has really helped to cement our visual identity. And I also want to thank all the incredible photographers who have so generously shared their photos with us throughout the duration of the project. So that's all for me and I'll see you all in the Q&A at the end of this session.